right. So for those of you that have just watched, and if not, go and watch it, the latest underwater video you can see, it was all about the technicalities and rigs and feed and all that sort of thing. So we thought today, perfect opportunity while it's still clinging on to decent weather and good fishing, we come up here to the utterly fish rammed everywhere. <laughs> Moncore Fisheries and we're going to put it into practice sort of thing. Just talk about what I was babbling about when it comes to using the right rigs, the right shot in, all the little things that are so important, especially with winter coming up. I mean, I'm really on clinging on now. We're filming this and it's second week in October when we're filming this. We're just on the cusp of it going, unfortunately, a lot harder. We're on the last bit of good fishing. So for me, it's massive using the right rigs for the way that you're feeding. I mean, the rigs, the feeding, the type of bait that you're using, all contributes together being right means more fish in the net. Yeah, not just because there's more fish feeding in your swim, just with little things like seeing bite and keeping your bait accurate. Those things that we're endlessly making these videos, trying to get across to you as much and in as much details as we possibly can, because they are the things that make things so important. I mean, ultimately what it comes down to, yes, any rig will catch fish, of course it will, within reason, <laughs> but, it's catching as many fish as possible by using the correct rig for the correct situation. Yeah, my favourite thing that I often hear, especially when it gets cold, is people saying, oh, they're feeding funny today. They're, they're being really weird. I'm hooking them around the face and the bites are really funny. They're not. Your rig's crap. Ultimately, that's what it comes down to. Your rig's not right for what you're trying to do and you're not seeing the bite. Your rig's not magnifying your bite. You're not putting it in the right way. Something is happening wrong. I mean, fish don't feed funny. We don't feed funny. You don't smear your face around your tea before you eat it, unless you're 12 or Andy May. You literally go straight in and you eat it. That's what you do. That's what they do as well. If they want it, they eat it. Quite simple as that. So what we want to do instead is just go through all the little steps to make sure everything's right. So I'm going to go straight in. Now, we haven't had a go. I'm plumbed up. I'm good to go. And I'm going to go through the two, maybe three different types of rigs, depending on what baits we go with, depending on how good it is and just show you what they're doing. And we put it all into practice, as I said. So straight in with things, and I'm gonna almost start my session, or I am. I'm gonna start my session as I'd start my session, and I wanna potentially make it progress today and get lots of fish in the peg. That's why we've come here. I mean, so there are lots of fish potential. Looking at it in the winter, it's very rare that you're gonna do the same on one line. Yeah, what you tend to do in the winter is start very, very negative. The baits might swap as well, you might use maggots but then you'll have another line that you can be more aggressive with to take the chance. Yeah, it might never materialize, but it's right. But today we're gonna to do it on one line and try and get it to, to kick off. So with it being rock bottom, potentially, so that's what we're looking at, potential winter, really hard fishing. I was gonna get some bigger pellets out from the hook, but they'll do. Um, it's about setting traps to start with. So even when it's the, really good in the summer for me, most of the time when I'm feeding, it's always going to begin with setting a trap because you want to see what's happening. Yeah, I spoke about this a billion, zillion, billion times in the past. And what I want to do is control them fish at first because I don't know how they're feeding. I don't know what's in my peg. I don't know anything until I've started fishing. So we're on about trappy rigs. Yeah, and because I'm going to just put a trap in, it's all about accuracy, keeping it as tight as I possibly can in as many little different ways as I can. Yeah, so I've got really little pots the lids taken off my pots to make sure they don't sprinkle out my pots so they come out in one clump, wetting my pellets. Lots of little things that make that go in as accurately as it can. So I'm on a really, really accurate little trap. And then the way you need to think about it is how the fish are moving in your peg. I mean, it's something we don't think about enough. And because you're putting your bait on that, I mean, my bait's landing in, what are they at? They're six inch square, aren't they? Seven inch square. That's what my bait's realistically landed in. You've seen it on the underwater one. It stays lovely and tight in sensible conditions, as long as it's not a hurricane. The fish, as a result, are moving a tiny, tiny little amount in your peg. They're not skipping from here to here to here to here to pick up pellets. They're not chasing bait. They're combined in a very, very, I mean, on a good day, they're combined into a really tight area, particularly if you're making a ball of micros or a tight ball of pellets. That could be in two inch square, three inch square. And as I say, because of that, the fish are barely moving in your peg when they're picking your baits up, which means that they're barely moving after they've picked your hook bait up, which is what they need to do to show the bite in the first place. Yeah, if the fish doesn't move and just sits there with it, the pellet or whatever in its mouth, you ain't gonna see a bite. Simple as, you don't see the bite as it sucks it in. You see it as it dislodges things and moves off. I mean, only slightly if your rig's right, but the fish still has to move for you to see a bite in the first place. Otherwise, you're never gonna know what's going on. 
So to begin with, because I'm setting these traps, my rigs are very stable. Yeah, very stable, very heavy. In today's case, we've got what? Four and a little bit foot. I've got a big 0.5 slim float on, loads of big shot down the line. Yeah, think about how I'm feeding. I'm just putting that trap in, so I don't need any sexy fall on me bait. I just want a hook bait, cherry on the top. That's how I want it, right over the top of my pile. And I want my rig, ultimately, to show the bites up when the fish is moving that two or three inch, because that's all it's gonna do. So you've seen how I put it in and all that with the curve. We'll talk about that when we do it, but the curve keeps things nice, keep things stable. But then again, big shot at the bottom. On this one, you can see I've got my first shot, which is a number nine on my four inch hook length. So it's probably three and a half inches away. It's gonna give a big thing to show that bite up. So if you're not feeding a big area, you're not loose feeding, getting them chasing about, you need those big shots close to your hook. I mean, regardless of what bait it is, if it's accurate, if it's a ball of ground bait, anything that stays tight, I mean, not maggots or meat or things like that, any bait that stays tight, you need that big shot so often, more often than not, that's gonna be the way that you're fishing. Big heavy shot, as we have in this case, as I say, four inches away, and then above it is a nice sort of spread bulk, you know what I mean, slightly tapered bulk, or great big shot. I mean, in that case, that's four number nines. One, two, three, three number nines, four number eight. Big old lump of shot in the bottom, what? 12 inch of a four foot rig. Yeah, it's really condensed. It's going to keep it over me pile, which we might as well do now. I'm going to catch a fish because I'm pretty desperate to catch one. So all plumbed up. You've seen how I plumb up on this as well, middle of the body. Yeah, I want it tight. So it's plumbed up to the middle of the body of my float because it allows that curve to happen, that allowance. And what I've also done today is when I put my rig in, I've had a little look at which way the water's moving. So I know that the water's moving from right to left. It's a bit of a donut this lake, so it's going around that way. So all those little things, really, really, really important to keep it tight. So first chuck, 10 pellets. It's all I need, a little pinch. I'm gonna put them in and the wet, so I know that they sink better. They'll also cling together a little bit better and I've got the lid off my pot. Yeah, almost nothing. And yes, it does make them a bit trickier to get out there but them leaving my lid without putting a lid on my pot, they leave it cleanly like that. In one lump, they're out. Whereas if you put a lid, they just bounce off the lid a little bit and it can kick them off. Only a tiny thing, it might create another three or four inches difference on the spread of the pellets. But I want to keep them condensed at first. I want to see where the fish are. Let's just put a couple more in that. So I've got me 10 pellets in, ready to go, just as we did on the underwater one. It's about keeping it as accurate as possible. So I'm going to sneak in. You know what I really should have done was put some glasses on, but we'll see. We might be able to see a bite or not. But forget about my rig to begin with. Yeah, and I'm doing as many little things as I can, setting up my far bank markers, sitting in the same place, a pole on the same mark on my elbow, and I'm just putting that trap in as lovely and as neatly as I can. Yeah, as you can see, because it's got no lid on, I can get them out really, really, really accurately. Yeah, and then what I'll do is whiz my rig, put it over there, hold that right over the mark and say, this is a nice heavy one, so I'm not bothered about it. Sinking nicely. Yeah, I want it to sink as fast as it possibly can, get down to where I am. The trap set, it's beautiful. Everything's as perfect as it can be. And because I've already checked which way the water's moving, I know that I can lay that in that way with my bait up toe sort of thing. It creates the curve, it anchors my bait. You can see it's rock solid. It ain't moving at all. Once I've tweaked that line and got it to sink, everything is absolutely perfect. And I can simply sit there now, wait for the fish to respond. I mean, see if there's any fish in my peg, see if I can get away without making noise, keep them as condensed as I possibly can. Jobs are good. I mean, and it's what we need to do all winter. It's how we fish um, micros and expanders to begin with all winter. I mean, you do things in exactly the same way, possibly make your um, micros into a ball just to get them more accurate than putting them in loose. It's all the same principles. Yeah, they're probably the only baits you could do it with. Maybe a stodgy ball of ground, maybe getting that to go right down, fishing a maggot over the top of it. Whenever your feed is condensed, this is the same thing your rig needs to be. Your need, rig needs to be really stable and magnifying the bites with that last shot. I mean, it is absolutely massive. I mean, and I've said all these things I'm saying before, but it, what it does teach you is what's going on in your peg. Because my rig's so tight, because it's so sensitive if you know it's, it's a tight trap all the way down i see anything that goes on as soon as a fish comes in that peg disturbs me pellets i get an indication on that float because that last shot 
and the bait itself as well because it's all tight is magnifying everything that's going on it just makes it really really perfect to let you know what's going on so the time when it has its downfall though is when other things are needed to track fish into your swim yeah it doesn't happen a lot to begin with in the winter but what i might need to do is start loose feeding to attract fish into my bag again said all this plenty of times before but when that comes into it that's when we need a change of rigs i mean i won't go on to that yet i'll try and just catch one or two on this and then the next step is say to either loose feed in whatever ways you want to whether it's sprinkling with a pot that's my first indication then that was right up in the water that one <laughs> but what i'll do is put another trap in just in case that wasn't the one that gave me an indication same again we shall see how we go let me get rid of them put them in nice so back in setting of the trap see i had one little bubble come up then hopefully that's a uh, fish here today i've just picked a line right there it's on the silt we're not here to to catch as many fish as possible today i just want it comfortable so you lot can see it easy enough. Same again, line after enough. Get that bait in. Give it a whack, make sure he's gone in. Yeah, it floats over the top of it. Beautiful. And so today I'm holding my pole to the right because it's keeping it still. If I pull it that way, then what it'll do is actually help to pull my float off course. I mean, it's doing it itself today because there's enough movement on the water. It's creating that nice tight line for me today. So you can see them little indications I'm getting now. Right, bite, lay me rigging again. Yeah, what I don't ever, 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 ever want to do is miss a bite and drop me rig straight back in. Yeah, the last thing I want to do is this, is have a bite like that, drop it back in. Yeah, as soon as I do that, I've messed everything up. I've messed up the tight line, the curve, everything's messed up. So that little bit in between the last dropper and my bait, it won't be tight anymore. It won't have that nice tight curve. It won't be anchoring. I want to pull me lazy out. So I won't see the bite. I mean, it'll make it slightly messed up and I won't see what's going on. I mean, yes, it's all right when it's solid like now and there's loads of fish feeding. But in the winter when they're so delicate and so frightened to move, so reluctant to move, that's when I need everything to be perfect. And it's them small differences. I mean, me having, what's he? Is he a little carp or an F1? He's a lovely little carpy. Um, yeah, for me, it's seeing them bites like that or being able to see every single indication that is occurring on my float. It's the difference between catching 12 and eight fish. I mean, those tiny, tiny little things like that, when it is really, really hard and there's not a lot feeding, that is what's going to put you ahead of everyone else. So the bloke that just lays his rig in willy-nilly, not thinking about it, or drops it in just being lazy, you can miss that one bite that can make all the difference. And for me, that ain't an option. I want to catch everything I possibly can. So let me nick one more on this. And luckily, because there's lots and lots and lots of fish feeding. Nice and easy to see him again. Keep that trap in. Beautiful. It's a bubbling going on, but that's not actually over me bait, that bubbling. So trap set. More than happy. That's about two inches to the left of where my last one was, but I'm good with that. You see all them indications I'm getting? Yeah. So all little indications that aren't bite. Yeah, I shouldn't be striking at that, but if I feel it's moved me bait, then I'm going to. So it just shows you absolutely everything that's going on. Don't get me wrong, this rig's completely wrong for how good it is now. Let's say we are right on the edge of it going horrendous and really struggling to catch. We're only a week or two away. So starting in this way with my coast and expander, so that was a much better example then. All nice and tight, lovely, dink on, beautiful. I, mean, I think it might be a little bit silty there where we're fishing, but so don't worry about that. That's us, he's a larger one. But that were better. Everything was perfect, nice, neat, how I want it to be. And that's all there is to it when it comes to that. Absolutely lunatic fish. What is going on? I have hooked flipper. Come on. 
we have hook flipper. So that, as I say, literally, that is all it's about. Those little things. It might be that you fish that peg from start to finish. It might be that you create 10 of those pegs during the winter. Specific, specifically, particularly, don't know. Whenever you're fishing pellets, whenever it's micros and expanders, that is the key time for me, definitely in commercial world, whenever we're doing that, specifically, what's the word, Ad? Specifically, specifically for skimmers. That's the one. They're the worst of the worst for it. They're where you need a tiny trap, really, really heavy shot. All that's keeping where you want them. But a lovely, lovely way of fishing pellets during the winter, just because you can't be aggressive. I mean, and when it comes to not being able to use hard pellets anymore, which venues I go to in particular seem to be around November time, it seems to lose its effectiveness. And once that happens, the versatility in pellets also changes because you can't lose feed uh, micro pellets. You just can't. Simple as you can shake them about a bit in a pot, but it's the only way you can feed. You can't do anything else with them. Really thought that one had gone in between the legs of the peg then, and I was going to look a right wally. But let me try and get this one out. And then I think it's time to make a change and show you what's the next step. So that covered, that is your trap setting, yeah, and magnification of your bikes. But all those little things, so, so, so important. Next thing I want to do is loose feed, yeah, and my rig for loose feed is mostly going to be different to what it is for setting a trap. I mean, you'll see it, it'll almost be incorrect because of the amount of indications I'm going to get. If I can start loose feeding now, which is what I'm going to do, I'm going to start pinging some pellets. This could be pellets, it could be maggots, it could be meat, it could be anything. Yeah, but as soon as loose feed is introduced into your peg, that area massively increases by tenfold, just because you can't physically be as accurate. Because of that, the fish start moving completely different. They're not heads down, poking anymore. Now the excited little kids in McDonald's, they're whizzing all over the place, depending again, what you're fishing for, time of year, bloody, bloody, blah. I'm not saying you can do that and make fish feed in the worst of pegs in the winter. I'm saying you need the rigs covered for if they do feed in that way. If you're gonna fish for maybe silvers in the winter, I'd, F1s, whatever, and you're loose feeding maggots, probably not pellets, but we're gonna do it with pellets today. If you're loose feeding a, a nice bait that lots of fish are prepared to eat, then you need the right rigs for it. So you can imagine once there's 20, 30 fish in that peg, if I were to fish a, what we call it, a more positive magnification style rig, my float's gonna be going under all the time. Like really, um, inefficient, pain in the bum, because your float's going, your float's going, and you've got to lift it and relay it, because otherwise you're not fishing um, effectively. It just makes you really, really slow. You're striking at too many and much, much more likely to foul up fish as well. So, I need to change my rig. Yeah, and this is for say, aggressively loose feeding, when I could be catching them through the water as well, I've got that percentage. And I want to move on to a rig that's better for it. I mean, more suited to it, right for it, sort of thing. So, Exactly the same sort of depth, um, I just swapped to a smaller float. Yeah, 0.3 float in this case. Yeah, We're still nice and positive with it being summer-ish. So we're on a 1.5 mil bristle. It's still fairly, fairly heavy. We can get away with a bit more this time of year. That's a whole new video for during the winter is going finer than that. But my shotting is completely different. I've lost the magnification now. So I'm just simply shotted, 0.3 float. I think it takes six or seven number 10s. What is it? One two, three, four, five, six, six number tens. I mean, really, really simple spread out shotting. Yeah, which still allows me to create my curve that I'm obsessed with. Yeah, plumbed up in all the same way. But what it does do is give a much sexier, slower fall. Yeah, and I'm much more inclined to lay it about all over the place because you're gonna have fish intercepting some bait. It's gonna happen. It's naturally the time it takes for pellets or in particular maggots to hit the bottom. They don't want to eat them on the bottom. They want to eat them through, but this rig gives me the best of both. So anytime I'm loose feeding, I'm going to have this style of rig. Yeah, it may be heavier, maybe a bit lighter, depending on what I'm doing, but that lovely, slow, fally, nice rig. If I hold him there so Adam can get him a little bit better. That lovely, slow, fally, nice style of rig. So that's my shotting's in there, probably just above the bottom half of the rig, but it's only six number 10. So it's going to be a nice, slow, lovely curve that gives them fish a chance to nail me bait on the way down. So let's go in with that. I've only fed 
two or three times with 10. So, but my area is massively increased. I'm gonna feed just before I go in, just try and make something happen. And hopefully with this venue being absolutely flipping ridiculous, things should happen quickly. So, but what I do have to do is keep things similar to the last rig. So I've got to lay it in the same way. I still want my rig to remain tight, but you can see with that one, I've laid it in on a tight line. Yeah, there's no plates, excuse me, for holding onto this rig and indication then on the way in. Yeah, there's no place for holding your float out, letting your rig swing in and lowering it. You're not achieving the right thing with that. So with this, I want to hold on tight to it, let it sink all the way down. Done, little dink as it goes down. Just sort that elastic out. That elastic's doing me head in. Tighten them up a bit. Right, same thing, I'm going to keep my rig out my peg. I'm going to feed my bait. You see, with the fall thing that we did, had a little look at the fall of pellets. We can put them in pretty much at the same time. And what I'm after today is marrying it up to get them going down at pretty much the same rate or hitting the bottom at the same rate. Because that's where I want my bikes to come, at the bottom. I don't want to catch shallow. That's a whole different thing altogether. I want this to literally just hit the bottom. Still have a little bit of thing about it. That was beautiful, that one. What's going on? Still have a little bit of stability to it. I don't want it flying through my peg. but I want that potential to catch fish through the water. I want to be able to get bites now. You know what I mean? And now, and now, and then it hits the bottom and everything's tight. So it gives me the best of both. Yeah, see that little dink. Let's see, what we're at the point now is when the fish just aren't quite settled. I'm rushing everything and not doing things because they're telling me to. I'm trying to dictate to them and they don't like that. There we have, lay me rig out, hold it tight. So even with this, it's a, if done at the wrong time because fish aren't feeding in that way, it's a very ineffective, time-wasting style rig because you are laying it in and laying it in and laying it in. It's got to be right for what you're doing. So it is very rushed what we're doing now. That was a better example and that went right under lovely. Lay it in again. The pellets are going to follow it this time. Not ideal, but we'll get away with it. Let it go down. You can see I'm holding onto it. My float's on the wonk all the time. Yeah? So I'm trying to get them fish to go on the bottom and eat some bait. I don't think they want to. I think they want to be up in the air whizzing about. But at most venues, you won't have that problem. So that's gone in nice. Fish have had a chance to watch it. It just makes my rig so much better now. Another one there. I think these fish are right up in the air, unfortunately, today. But if we can nail one now, once I've got enough bait on the bottom. With a bit of luck, they'll go down and eat some food. Or better. So what we have here today, unfortunately, we'll have two different types of fish. We'll have F1s whizzing around up in the air that are causing the problems. And then we'll have some carp on the bottom there, what I need to get feed in, and then we'll be able to show it better then. That would better. No, it is a carp every single chuck at the minute. Keep on laying them in. So I think at the minute, my other rig would probably be better. It'd keep things nicer, tighter on the bottom. I'd be quicker fishing. But I still need the options of doing whatever I need to do in the right way for what them fish want to do. Now it's really, really wrong at the minute for how they're feeding. But they'll settle in a sec. It's just because I'm rushing it. Let me feed twice, get some bait on the bottom. See, that area now is massive that I'm feeding. It's gone from six inch square to three foot square. Oh, that was nice. So that was perfect, perfect, perfect example then. Lay it in, two seconds later, bite on. It'll be a carp, this one as well. So today the F1s are being a bit of a problem, but so it's because it is still nice and warm. But by using that rig now, I mean, I wouldn't have caught that fish using a heavy shotted, a rig it can't see. I mean, that fish, like I could be wrong, but I'd, I'd almost bet my life on it, that that fish has watched that bait sink, followed it down and nailed it. So by using the right rig for the right situation. So it's not, I'm not telling you the difference between catching a fish and not. 
I mean, of course, if there's a bait there, there's a chance of them eating it. It is about them little, little differences that put four or five more fish. He's a flipping barbel. He's not read the script. Pellet eating barbel. Right lovely one him. I do like a but I think they're my favourite commercial fish of barbel. Don't catch very many of them. I'm liking that. That's lovely. But perfect for this sort of thing. And now what you have to weigh up is there'd be one other rig that we'd use. And it tends to, for me, this is more than when I'm fishing maggots and I'm loose feeding maggots. I mean probably it's probably the most popular thing when it comes to F1s on snake lakeys. Definitely in winter, catching on maggots short is what it's all about as well. For that, neither of those rigs is going to be any good. Yeah, it's the one other rig that I might use, and that's not that one. <laughs> it's that one. It's very much a bulk style rig. The only time I pretty much use a bulk in me fishing, and it goes against what you're doing, even though you're loose feeding, because you're fishing so short, once it gets cold and you start fishing really, really short, you find that the fish don't want to come up and intercept your bait anywhere near as much. So you want to keep them on the bottom, but you want a bit of a sexier rig. You want it to sink nicely in that last little bit. So we're not even gonna have a go at this one. This is just a, a showy, talky one. Sides afloat, all depends on the depth, obviously. Today I've got a 0.4 on, about right for four foot. And this is really, really simple. Just as we did in the, the underwater one as well. It's just a bulk and a dropper. Bulk and a single dropper gets job done when fishing maggots short. That'd be the only exception for me in the winter that yeah, you might cup a few and keep them fairly tight, but with maggots, you are never, ever, ever going to keep them on a six, uh, six inch square. They're going to go all over the place. So at that time is the only time I want to swap to something that gives you the weight to show a bite up, but also gives you a little bit of sexiness at the bottom. You know, a slightly nicer fall you want with them maggots. But again, you've got the fish moving. Yeah, Even though you're loose feeding here, you're chucking your bait here and it's spreading about a bit. They're not as condensed as they'd be if you were fishing micro pellets and expanders where you've got to use this style of rig your your stable number eights all the way through rig yeah you can get away with a bit more movement so that is what this video is all about i just want you to think more about the way that you're feeding the way it's making them fish behave in your peg or the way the fish are behaving because they want to and using the right rig for it it'll definitely make a difference and just pour that extra two or three fish in your net at the end of the match